Hello and welcome into the Nixverse. My name is George, and if this is your very first time here or you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and turn on the notification bells. Very much appreciated. And the thumbs ups. All right, well, this video is going to be about none other than our big free agent signing of this offseason, Evan Fournier. That's right. I wanted Knicks to make the trade for him at the trade deadline. I wanted him. Boston got him for two second rounders. And then we actually did a signing trade with Boston. And we got second rounders. But we're actually probably going to end up just getting one of them the way it's all structured. But very excited about this edition. Very, very excited about this edition. So it's all working out pretty well. Pretty well indeed. But what does Fournier bring us? What does he bring to this Knicks squad that we didn't already have? Well, we've touched on this before. What he brings is multi-level scoring that Reggie Bullock just didn't have. Reggie Bullock was primarily a catch and shoot uh, three-point specialist and an excellent defender. So we lost a little bit on the defense, that is for sure, but what we've made up in the offense is tremendous, tremendous. It's such a high upside with this guy. Uh, what the beautiful part of it is he can create his own shots. So that's something that's something that we have sorely lacked. And then we added Kemba, and Kemba, we know, creates shots for himself, creates shots for everybody. So, man, I'm very excited about this team, but how good can Evan Fournier be for the Knicks? In my opinion, in my opinion, Mr. Fournier has the potential to have a career year next season. In fact, he's trending in that direction. He is indeed trending in that direction. His career stats, uh, he averaged about 13, 14 points a game throughout his whole career. Uh, but in the past six seasons, six seasons, that's what he's averaged. He's averaged 13.2, uh, 5.3 three-point attempts. Uh, he's averaged 45.3% field goal percentage, 38% from the three-point line, 37.9% he's averaged, which is very good. And his E field goal percentage is a 53.5%. Free throw percentage, 82.1%. Now, I've looked at the past six seasons, which is coincide when, we became, when he became a starter. So I've only been looking at his starter years. Last season, however, last season, well, actually, let's go to the last two seasons with Orlando. His three-point percentage rose to 40% in 2019 and 2020 for, according to Cleaning the Glass, that's good enough for a 77 percentile ranking. Now, 100 being the best, zero being the worst. Last season for Orlando, before he got traded, actually in total, Total for the season, he shot 41.3%. So he, when he got traded to Boston, his three-point shooting even went up. And he actually, for Boston, he shot 45.6%, which is good enough, get this, for a 98 percentile ranking. So that's the level of three-point shooting where he's gotten better, become a better, I mean, everybody in the NBA has become better three-point shooters, but he is really trending way upwards. You can see the ranking reveals where he places amongst everybody else at his position. So we're getting a lethal three-point shooter, but the beauty, the beauty of him is that his two-point shooting is also something that we, I mean, just Reggie just didn't give us that. So for two-point shooting, he averaged 53.6%. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. I, I take those numbers any day. And he has, I mean, he can he can finish at the rim. These are these are just things that we just didn't have last season. Now we have them. And you saw what he did with France. He, he got he got the silver medal. And in one game against the USA, he owned he owned them. He owned us. So now he's one of us. There, look at look at him here at the Empire's. He carried that jersey all around the city. I think he was at the Empire State Building. That, that was the same day he was actually uh, introduced uh, to the press. I like him. I like I like his uh, his attitude. He feels like a leader, but at the same time, a leader who's also able to blend in with other leaders, other alphas. That's a very good quality, especially for someone as good as him. All right. So what are we what are we talking about? So he averaged nineteen point seven points per game. And 2.9 rebounds and 3.7 assists. 
Okay, so the guy, the guy can score, but how much better can he get? How much better? Well, let's see this. Before we get to that, his points, his PSA, which is shots, points per shot attempts, 120.2 in 2019 and 2020 for an 81% percentile. And then for Orlando, a 124.3. So it went up. That was last season before he got traded to 87 percentile. Now, I'm not counting some of the stuff when he got traded to Boston because he got COVID and it was a little bit of an odd situation for him. He wasn't really, uh, he didn't get a chance to mesh in well with the team in the beginning, but he closed the season pretty, pretty strong with the Celtics. His e field goal percentage was a 56.1% in 2019 and 2020. So you can see that's higher than his career average, which is 53.5 for a 78 percentile ranking. And last season for Orlando, 56.6%, .6 percentile. So you see his actually his e field goal percentage rose up a little bit, but his ranking went down just two, two points because everybody shot better. Everybody shot better last season, which is uh, why defense is really important. But it's also why offense is just crucial because you can have the greatest defense in the world, but if you can't put the ball in the bucket when we need it, you know, it just makes life so much harder for the leaders on the team. I think Evan Fournier has a potential to become a leader on this team from just purely an output standpoint. So what do I mean by this? All right, these are my projections for Evan Fournier for next season. I think that he can average points per game, 20.2 to 23 and a half points per game. Rebounds can go from three to five, assists 3.7 to four, somewhere around in that range. Those are very, first of all, the ones on the left, very doable. Basically, all he has to do to do that is just be his recent self. That's, let's say we're, we're factoring, he averaged about 14 shot attempts per game on average for Orlando, and even including last season in total. 14 shots, seven two-pointers, seven three-pointers. So if you, you know, put the uh, his averages, his 53.6% for two-point shooting, and his 41.3% for three-point shooting from last season, Mm, that gives you 20 point and, and uh, he'll do four free throw makes a game. So that averages out to 20.2 points. Yes. Now, let's say he gets a few extra shots. Let's say he shoots, gets 17 attempts per game. If he is performing at the level that I project him to, then he will get more shots because he's just going to be probably may not being our best shooter overall on this team you know i mean julius julius's three-point shooting last season was outstanding and then rj as well so who knows it'll be a nice competition between those three to be the best outside shooters but we know the fournier has done this throughout his whole career whereby julius and rj basically it just, it's been coming it just basically came on last season so you know that's what we're looking at here but let's say he gets instead of seven attempts he gets nine attempts per game for the two two pointers and instead of he attempts seven three-pointers a game, he attempts eight. So that's 17 total shots. They'll keep the free throw attempts at five, which is what it was before. We'll keep that the same. So let's say same percentages. You add them together, and that's where it gives you the 23.5%. Now, that's a possibility. <laughs> if he's on a team that's performing well, doing really well with Julius, and he's averaging 23 and a half points by the All-Star game, he might get a look. He might get a look. He might actually end up being an all-star. There's a possibility. Because he's going into the prime of his career. And he seems happy. He's got a nice fat contract. He's in the greatest city in the world. So, this is what I'm expecting. I'm really excited about this. Really excited about this. I think he is going to end up being one of the best free agent signings of this past offseason for any team. That's how I feel. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and drop your comments love to hear your thoughts about my projections thumbs ups and i will see you around the next